will pass this on to Duncan Barrett. Duncan Barrett is with Omni Development. Um, he is a former NPC director of two NPCs in upstate New York. Uh, Better Neighborhoods Incorporated, as well as uh, Trip um, in Troy, and uh, has been a, a very strong supporter of the Neighborhood Preservation Program. Um, even when he left the NPC world and moved on to other endeavors. So, with that, uh, Duncan Barrett is going to start our 1978 snapshot. have not changed and the challenges you face today are not dissimilar to the challenges that uh, NPCs faced in 1977. First of all, I want to provide a little perspective. Um, 1977 was a while ago. Gas was 65 cents a gallon. Um, a new home uh, uh, cost uh, uh, on average $49,000. I was in Troy, New York. A new home in Troy actually cost $24,000, but uh, this is the national statistic. Uh, a, a Series 3 BMW only cost eight grand. Uh, there was a blackout in uh, New York for 25 hours in July of that year, and I remember it was uh, my son's birthday. And I was in my seventh year as the executive director of the Troy Rehabilitation and Improvement Program. Uh, a, a housing company that Patrick Madden now leads and, uh, uh, and, and successfully. Um, and really, um, there were not-for-profits all over the state who were interested in housing for poor people and promoting that, advocating it. Um, we're building housing for poor people either through rehabilitation, which is primarily what Tripp uh, did and does, uh, or through new construction, and doing it largely without any government support. Today, there are a lot of actors in the affordable housing uh, uh, field and the community development field, from cities uh, uh, to for-profit developers like my company, uh, 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 to uh, public housing authorities. But in 1977, very few people were interested in this. It was a mission-driven field. Uh, and uh, the not-for-profits, the NPCs, the, the not-for-profits who were going to become NPCs, because we didn't even know what the term meant then, uh, were, were leading the charge, and they were producing housing. Uh, and to give you another perspective on 1977, uh, this is a before and after, not a very good photograph, but uh, just what I could find. Uh, a row of houses in Troy, New York that Tripp rehabilitated and um, earlier than 77, probably 74, 75, and sold to four homeowners, as, uh, uh, for the first time new homeowners. And these were buildings that had front facades and side walls, no roofs, no floor choice, and no back wall. So there were three walls. We see these still in Troy and Albany. I'm sure you see them in your community. Um, historically precious. Uh, these buildings were built 
right after the Civil War, beautiful buildings, uh, and uh, uh, this is the demo phase. This is pre-asbestos, by the way. You can know how to spell asbestos. Um, Pre-lead. <laughs> we knew how to spell it. Uh, but uh, we rehab these buildings, and uh, I have to tell you, uh, 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 Trip was very uh, bold in uh, in uh, taking on rehab jobs, and but not very uh, consistent in accounting. Uh, and uh, but we think we rehab these buildings for five dollars and twenty four cents a square foot. We're do my company today is doing buildings for 150 bucks a square foot, buildings like this, so uh, uh, the top of the world has changed. Beautiful homes, um, a couple of them still owned by the families we sold them to in 1975, uh, so certainly a success story. Uh, these are just some shots uh, from that era. Uh, but as I said, the NPCs were leading, they were producing housing, they were raising the issue of their uh, uh, communities in much the same way you are doing uh, uh, today. Um, but there was no government support. The, the community redevelopment, the uh, CDBG program was in its second year, actually in its first funded year, and there really was no government support. Um, and the governor, uh, who was Kerry at that time, and the leaders of the legislature, Primarily Denny Farrell, and it really warms my heart to see that you are honoring him today. That is completely appropriate and completely deserved, entirely deserved. Uh, but the legislature, um, in their wisdom, uh, uh, without necessarily much prompting from folks like us, uh, decided to uh, put some money in the game to invest in MPCs. And um, they created the uh, private housing finance law Actually, Pete Granis, who is now with the Comptroller's Office but was in the Assembly for a long time, was the uh, chair of the Assembly Housing Committee at, in that era. Denny wasn't. Um, uh, and uh, uh, a good guy went out to be DEC commissioner for a while before some governor fired him. I can't remember which one. But um, uh, uh, Pete Granis' staff wrote the, the legislation. I actually helped write the legislation which at that age and that period of my life I thought was a matter. I later decided it was uh, just a, uh, a minor concession they were making to try to get the, the language right. And as you can see from what's on the screen, the language was a little clumsy, but it was well-intentioned. Um, and it was in response to what um, the NPC community was doing out in, on the streets. Um, there were 50 groups that were, first of all, the legislature uh, allocated a modest amount of money, uh, I think a half a million dollars. And the, the uh, then Division of Housing and Community Renewal uh, decided in their wisdom that they would spread that around among 50 groups, which was uh, $10,000 each. And um, so 50 groups across the state filed a two-page application. I'm not kidding. <laughs> Front and back paper, no no electronic applications. I don't know if there were even faxes, but the, there were no electronic applications. And uh, 50 groups, about 65 groups applied, and 50 groups were awarded. Uh, Trip was one of those groups, and uh, we got each of us got ten thousand dollars in the first year. Before that year was up, the legislature added five million dollars to the program, so uh, they got serious as as time went by. Um, and my board chairman and I got to go to a little bill signing ceremony with Governor Kerry. The board chairman uh, was a wonderful man, uh, 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 sat with the governor for the cameras and they, they went through the motions of signing the bill. And a guy named Nate Barr, uh, who was then at the division and had come out of rent uh, regulation. So he had no idea what went on in neighborhoods, uh, let alone how housing actually got built. But a nice enough man, uh, and I stood in the background, and I remember that day, well, I don't think I'd probably been in that part of the Capitol before. Um, so it was, a, a, it was a kick, and Tripp at that time had an annual budget of about $600,000, and we maybe had eight or 10 houses under construction, and Nate and I are sitting there where the reporters are talking to the governor, and 
were standing there, Nate asked me what we were going to do with our money, and I found out that Nate didn't have any sense of humor, because <laughs> I told him that $10,000 wouldn't pay for a staff person. We needed a staff person, but because it wouldn't pay for a staff person, we were going to buy plants for the office. And he was visibly and quite audibly upset <laughs> with me. And I don't think he and I ever recovered uh, 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 our relationship. But there was a really significant cultural difference uh, between the division and the NPCs. The NPCs were advocates, uh, they were organizers of, of, of community based efforts. Some of us, um, even some of us in this room, thought we were ex revolutionaries. Uh, we were activists and we were working in the field on the problem. DHCR, frankly, and I know they're represented today, you're going to hear from the commissioner uh, uh, later, and they are for my company, but the efforts we're doing in affordable housing, our best partner at this point uh, in our lives. But uh, they were bureaucrats, they were risk averse, they were paper driven, that hasn't changed. And they were really process oriented and resistant to change, and they had no notion of, of what we did or how we operated or how we got things done. That hasn't completely changed, although there is a more, there's a much deeper experience on the staff. My point to you is simply this. Um, I know the challenges you face in the legislature in the coming session. I know the challenges you face every year for the last decade in funding and respect. And um, it's not new. It, it existed from the uh, origination of the program. Um, and I'm really here to both thank you and congratulate you on your persistence and your productivity. There were some heroes and, and good people in that process. Uh, frankly, I think Governor Kerry uh, took a leadership role. He didn't allow the legislature to putz around with things. He told them what he wanted done. And, and uh, uh, had the gravitas uh, to get it done. Pete Grannis is a good guy, and uh, he, he didn't hesitate. He tried to figure out what the right thing was and, and do it. Uh, Denny, I said, is really uh, uh, the grandfather, the godfather, depending on how you want to look at it, of this program. And uh, I you really do uh, uh, owe him a, a lot of thanks. And there was a young lady, uh, Sharon Lawler, who worked in uh, who in HCR, who really understood the mission and was passionate about the groups um, uh, getting the resources they need and, and, and getting uh, boots on the ground to do the work. Unfortunately, HCR then, as now, was a fairly big uh, bureaucracy and uh, Sharon's uh, uh, trying to entice the bureaucracy to move didn't always uh, work. So in closing, I'd just like to say, as I said at the opening, congratulations. Um, uh, and to a job well done, and uh, I encourage you with uh, 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 really all of my heart uh, to continue to persist. I know it is both hard work, um, that you're not always uh, rewarded by the state adequately, and, uh, uh, and we face a, uh, you face another uh, challenging year. Um, uh, I am on the executive uh, board of the New York State Association for Affordable Housing, and I think certainly in the upcoming uh, budget round, we will advocate for your program uh, as we have in the past and continue to do that. And I want to toast a few former comrades uh, uh, who are not with us, groups who are not with us. Uh, my favorite was Banana Kelly. I'm not really sure what they were about, but I always loved the name, and I knew the <laughs> people there. Uh, and Cornhill People United in Utica, who are since gone and Capitol Hill Improvement uh, Corporation in Albany, which is uh, long gone, but which I did a project with. Um, again, congratulations, my best wishes, and uh, uh, my encouragement to you to persist. Uh, the work is important, and I know you're doing it well. Thank you very much.